It's Friday, July 9th, and welcome to This Week in Linux News. Let's start off with some vulnerability news. Ubuntu discovered a hole in their system this week which allowed non-root users to be able to run a couple of commands and gain root access. Not cool. They did, however, find the bug, they patched it, and they've released that patch. The other thing to mention here is that other Linux distros are not affected by this. In another sort of vulnerability, software engineer Sam O'Neill has released an open source library that emulates Skype's RC4 encryption. A lot of people have been trying to reverse engineer Skype's algorithms for a long time now, and he was finally able to do it successfully. If you'd like to see the work that he did, you can actually go to his website and view all of the code. Don't know if it's going to be up or not, but I will have links in the show notes. All right, let's talk about web browsers just a little bit. Mozilla decided this week they were going to release Firefox version 4.0 beta 1. There are quite a few new features in Firefox 4, including a new UI with the tab bar being moved up to the top, the stop and reload buttons being combined into one, the bookmarks toolbar has been removed by default and replaced with a bookmarks button, there's a new add-ons and extensions API and a new interface to go along with that, and now they've added WebM and WebGL support. Speaking of browsers, Google is adding accelerometer support to Chromium. This will allow web developers to keep track of the orientation of whatever device you're on by using JavaScript. This should be very useful when Chrome OS actually starts coming to tablets, and it should be noted that Firefox has had functionality similar to this for quite a while now. The Firefox functionality can of course be seen on devices like the Nokia N900's Firefox mobile browser. The final bit of browser-related news, Opera 10.60 for Linux has been released. It's been out for Windows and Mac for a little while now, but now the Linux version is officially available. The biggest changes in this version, they report a 50% JavaScript speed increase over Opera 10.50, and they now have HTML5 and WebM support. Speaking of HTML5 and WebM, YouTube says that they're going to be staying on Flash for now. HTML5 just doesn't have all the features that they need now, and it's not standardized. As far as features, it doesn't have full screen support, it doesn't support all the controls that they need, like moving through the video and starting the video at certain points, it doesn't have DRM support, it doesn't support webcams and microphones, lots and lots of different things, so it makes sense for them to stick with Flash for now. Let's talk about some software and distribution updates now. Compiz 0.9.0 released this week. This is the first major release of Compiz since they actually merged Compiz, Compiz++, Nomad, and Compaz Fusion into one program. The entire thing has been completely rewritten in C++, and now they've separated out compositing and OpenGL plugins into two separate features. And the other big update this week is Mandriva 2010.1 released. They have a slew of new software available, a lot of new cutting edge software, although their kernel is a little bit out of date. They've added the ability to use a guest account. They've added a new installation method. I guess this goes to show that Mandriva definitely isn't having any more financial difficulties. And to wrap things up, let's talk a little bit about Android and Miko. Ars Technica put up an article this week on how the JavaScript in the Android 2.2 platform compares to iOS 4.0's JavaScript. They did two separate benchmarks. The SunSpider benchmark showed that Android was almost twice as fast as iOS 4, and the V8 test showed that it was three times faster. And of course, immediately following this, the guys over at Slashgear did their own tests and compared Migo to Android and found that Migo was faster in the SunSpider test than Android. Of course, that's not exactly comparing things evenly, but it is kind of cool to see that Migo, such a new operating system, is doing very well in JavaScript performance. Speaking of Migo, they just pushed out an update to version 1.0 for their netbook and core releases. This updates their kernel to version 2.6.33.5, they've added some better 3D support, they've added some web enhancements, some proxy stuff, some DNS management stuff, a lot of new features there available. If you're running Migo and you'd like to update, go into your applications, into the system tools, and hit update system. Very simple. Well that wraps up This Week in Linux news. If you haven't already, go check out my website, thisweekinlinux.com, and the new forum that I put up, thisweekinlinux.com slash forum. There are a bunch of great guys out there, and a lot of topics have already been posted and discussed. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my second channel, youtube.com slash twiltalks. I'm going to be moving my twiltalks segment over there just because it matches the name, it matches the idea of the channel. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. One last thing, I hadn't really been paying that close of attention to the YouTube moderator module, and I've looked and there are a bunch of questions out there, so I'm going to start taking some of those and answering them either here or on my second channel, dealing with them as I see them, so uh, look forward to that. Thanks guys!